Yes, and now we're going to be talking about um, the artist biography. So that's a little different from um, the artistic statement because this one is about you. Um, so your artist biography, it's about you and not your art. So it's time to say bye-bye art, this is me. Um, so basically it's similar to a personal biography for a resume, but based on your art career. And this one, I said for the first one, so for the artistic statement, it was written at the first person. This one is written at the third person. So third person pronouns are they, she, he, or any third person pronoun that you identify as. Uh, so it explains who you are as an artist and it highlights your achievements. And again, your achievements can be life achievements. It has nothing to do necessarily with everything that you may have done in your art career. Maybe at some point, you'll have the experience to do so. And then here we're, um, as colleagues of art on this uh, Zoom call, um, artistic colleagues, we are all at different points and it's okay. Um, so really look at what some are, sometimes your professional achievements in other areas in the art have heavily influenced the reason why you did art. So they're not to be disregarded. So you're connecting how your life events have influenced your artwork. So it includes information about you. So where are you from? So, hey, um, uh, now I'll say hey, because it's a third person. So let, let's rewind. So that would be like an artistic statement. It would be like, Olivier was born in Montreal and is now located in Vancouver. Ollie has studied um, media education at UBC. And then he started to give the arts a try. So you see how it's like a beautiful narrated third person uh, story. So try to stay current with what you're working on. So if you've had a career that has lapsed over years and years and years, this is awesome. But like people are just there to read like a very brief thing about you. So they want to know, they want to be to the point. So make sure you just focus on highlights in your career. Of course, a highlight would be that I'm an awesome participant at the Vancouver Art Center Arts Festival 2022, because you don't want to miss on that. So your biography should be longer than your statement. We look at your statement at around 150 words. This one, I would say it can go all the way to 250. So I'm giving you 100 words more, uh, but not that much more. Uh, this is a living document, though. This one, like all, like the artist statement, that we talked before, if you're focusing on a specific collection, you would have to make another artistic statement according to a new collection. Where an artist's biography, it would stay the same, but it's a living document. And for those who don't know what a living document is, is that like, it will change. Sometimes like something that was a highlight at the beginning of your career may not be a highlight when um, you've done 75 exhibitions. So things will change and it's okay that they change. But make sure that like whenever you apply to events, uh, organizations, to galleries, that you make sure that your um, biography has been updated. So those are some elements to brainstorm when you write an artist's biography. So you can collect and organize any courses that you've completed. It can be on anything. And courses doesn't have to mean that you've had a degree. It can be that you've taken this amazing workshop on how to write an artist biography, right? So don't stress about the years that you started them or completed them. Uh, so you can write down keywords that would use to be used to best describe you influences and like put these, put these aside. So these can be art styles and people and places. So it can be... Um, Ollie was um, in the Museum of Fine Art in Montreal when he saw for the first time a painting by Riopel. Riopel, and this is true actually, Riopel being one of his greatest influences, he decided to um, enroll in, into a fine art school in Montreal in 2003. So that's something that um, could be a connection. So you can use connection to your interest 
to kind of like blend in with elements of your life. So it keeps it interesting. Be like, oh yeah, Riopel. I know maybe if you don't know who Riopel is, Google him. Uh, he's awesome. Uh, so write down why you want to, what do you want to do as an artist? Um, was it something you've like you've known since you can remember? Was it a specific experience? I believe that if we're like an artist now, everyone's an artist. There's no um, classification of like, oh, I became an artist at 15 years old or I became an artist at 42. I think it's always within you. I think it's more when you had a realization that you had in within you, but an artist is an artist. Um, write down some key achievements that you've had so far in your art career. Uh, basically something that we may not I'll think about is your name, you know, where you live and where you typically work from. Sometimes we don't really think about that, but like how you incorporate that is a, as can be done in a funny way, in a way that's like, hey, my name is Olivier, but I go by Ollie, for example. So it can be like, no one as Olivier, uh, you will read about him um, as Ollie in the galleries that you see, um, something like that. Uh, so what are some styles or mediums that you work in? There we go, artist biography, so suggested structure. So this is what I suggest that you use for um, your biography. So start with your name and where you live and where you typically work from. Then why you do what you do as an artist. And then those keywords that you use to describe your influences, the art styles, people and places that you've brainstormed before. Then you go into the styles or mediums you do work in. And then the courses that you've completed. And then the key achievements you have had so far in your art career. And then what you're currently doing, presenting and showcasing. And at the end, you can even say like where we can find you. So maybe you're not showcasing anywhere, but your work can be found online or your work can be found on social media. Nowadays, everything's accurate. We've seen more and more with a pandemic that we had to be resourceful. So things have changed, things have shifted, like how we used to present art has shifted. So any experience both online and in person are completely valid. So for an artist's bio, that's something that you can do. It's not something that you have to do. Some people will say those are do, some people say those are don't. Sometimes people will ask for these items and sometimes don't. So the structure that I mentioned before, make sure that you have that down but you can have these elements basically on the back burner. Um, so for this first one is add a picture. That's optional. But let's say you want to put your bio on your website and you want people to know about you. A picture is a great way to make your art personable if you're not in person. Some people are not comfortable having their pictures online, which is totally fine. You don't have to. That's why it's optional. Maybe you want to create an avatar with your, with your face or a drawing of your face, somebody else done of what you've done. So there's different ways of connecting with people. And again, uh, there will be other times where we're gonna talk about how to take a good picture. Um, having a professional picture is, is great, or if you can't afford it, if you don't wanna have that done or spend the time, you can take a picture of you doing your work, uh, for example. But, let's, but you need to make sure in your biography that like if you're gonna show yourself, that we can clearly see um, who you are, or if you don't want to show yourself, but you want to show your work, maybe it can be a picture from the back of you painting or you rehearsing or you writing down um, music. It can, sometimes people can ask for links of showcases. So um, with the Vancouver Outsider Arts Festival, exactly this is what we're going to do after, um, you're going to see your name on, on uh, their website and all of the past participants are still there. So if people say, hey, can I see what you showed before? You can always refer back to uh, your experience here as um, a, a curated um, show that you're part of. And provide where to purchase your work. Are you selling on Etsy? Are you selling directly from you on Instagram? Do people contact you by email for pieces? Do you have a portfolio? Um, do you have a website? Are you selling through artwork or Federation Gallery or Galia? Add all of these information onto um, a specific place uh, on, for, on your bio. And if people require them or want them or like are hoping to help you make sales or hoping to stream your albums, have links on where you can stream your album online or where to buy your book. 
um, or where to book you. Let's say if you have an agent for dancing or theater, um, you know, uh, where, where to book you and add links of articles about you or your exhibition. So if you happen to be interviewed for um, any media outlet, um, add the links, create, uh, start building a, um, a media section on your website, uh, keep accumulating these things because maybe people will wanna say, hey, on your artistic bio, we would like to have, we would like to have a bio and links from previous media um, activity that you've done if you're hoping to show somewhere. So it's always good to keep a bank of all of these things.